Okay, hi everybody, thanks so much for joining us. It's now 12.15, so we're gonna get started. Um, a big thank you to Dr. Marku and the CanPrev team who is here to speak to us today about immunity. So I will hand it over to you guys. Hey, thank you everyone. Thank you, Michelle, for that uh, wonderful introduction. Um, I wanted to welcome everybody to this webinar. We're gonna be full energy, full excitement. I hope you all walk away with something that will help you change your immune system today. Thank you for joining this amazing virtual experience. Many of you have probably done a few of these and you're in the swing of it, but we at Camp Rev like to do something a little different. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Elias Marku. I'm a naturopathic doctor in Mississauga and I welcome you all to our immunity presentation. I guarantee you guys are gonna have fun with me. So please sit back, relax, and join us in the fun that we're gonna have for the next 30 to 45 minutes. I wanna welcome everybody who's on. Um, and uh, if I could get Michelle to just come on in for one brief second and tell everybody what they can expect today, Michelle. Uh, not only do we have this super high energy, fun presentation, but CanPrev has generously offered some wonderful prizes for today. So we're gonna randomly select three winner winners from the list of attendees who are watching. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are, you are the winners. So I'll hand it back over to you. Excellent, thank you. So I'm super excited to have you guys all here today. And I really wanna make you guys interactive and engaged. So throughout the whole presentation, I need you to be paying attention. And if you're one of those lucky people who answers quickly, I might just give you a surprise uh, uh, prize as we go on. So just before I get started, just in the chat box, can you all hear me? Because this is super important. Can you all hear me? Just quickly in the chat box, just say, yes, I can hear you. Uh, there we go. There's Colette, Francie, Christina says hello. Shelby, Shelby says yes. Laurel, Joyce, as I introduce you guys all, Terry, I want to welcome you guys all here, and I really want you to be engaged. I see Teresa has joined us also. Susan's here. Julie's here. Awesome, awesome. I want you guys all to just have fun today as we just go through this webinar and learn something about immunity. So let me get started. My name is Dr. Elias Marcoux. I was once a former firefighter. I went on to do naturopathic medicine. My current practice, practice is a multidisciplinary practice in Mississauga, Ontario. Um, I do a lot of these educational talks for uh, CanPrev. And you know what? Over the years, I'm pretty much bringing you 18 years of experience and close to 100,000 patient visits. I'm passionate about changing your health. I'm passionate about kind of getting you back on track and educating you so you can live your best life ever. So join me here today as we kind of go through the topic of immunity. And please put your questions in the chat box if you want to. If you can't see something, let us know. There's a Q&A section up on the top of your Zoom. Write in your question. At the end of this presentation, I'm gonna deep dive into some more of the questions. And you know what? I actually find that part of the presentation the most rewarding because there's gonna be some questions that may apply to you, but you were a little shy to answer. So just ask those questions and we'll be able to help you out as we move forward. So let's be interactive. Let's get you all pumped and let you guys all have fun with me today. Now, we have a couple of objectives I want us to kind of really focus in on. The first one is I'm gonna to try to share with you fundamental wisdom, foundational wisdom that you, know, you can just apply the moment you, you press stop and leave this meeting, you will be able to um, you know, apply these principles into your practice. They're easy and they're practical. We want them to be easy and practical because we want you to kind of implement them and start changing your lifestyle. And finally, if you do one small change that we recommend here, we're going to see a lifetime of deep changes in your health and your well-being. So today we're going to look at five ways you can achieve an incredible immune system an incredible immune system. And I'm gonna share these little secrets, okay? I, I call them little secrets that, you know what, we, some of us already do, but we're gonna deep dive into doing even better. So here we go, and I hope you enjoy. So I really want to really make you think, you know, how many of you 
really can't sleep and have thought in your mind, does this affect my immunity? Or does the stress I'm under affect my immunity as a whole? How many colds and flu should I have in a season? And mind you, there's gonna be a little hysteric in the 2020 season because we're dealing with COVID plus cold and flu. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that as we move into the presentation. <clears throat> and is my diet important for my immunity? And these are the questions I often get in practice, which I want and I'm hoping that many of you will sit back and consider and maybe get the answers to these questions as we go through this presentation. So let me share one aha moment in my life that made me think, oh my God, this is the, the secret to my immune system. So many of you out there uh, on, on the participants are probably moms, dads, busy individuals. Well, about two years ago, this very interesting observation happened to me and I thought, you know, this is, this is like an aha moment for me. Now I knew the facts, I knew what was going on, but this is a little bit of my story. So about two years ago, you know, I have two little girls, uh, Berlin and Sage, and they go to preschool. And, you know, they were having difficulty sleeping at the time and their sleep patterns were off. And um, I would stay up with them. I would stay up with them to comfort them and put them to sleep. And then I would wake up middle of the night because they would wake up and I would wake up and it would disturb my sleep. What I found, and that was the winter of 2018, it was November. The first week I got a pink eye and I was like, wow, I've never had this before. What could this be attributing to? I take my vitamins, I, I'm active, and I never put, put it together. Then about a month later, I got a cold, chest cold. And I'm like, I'm taking these cold supplements, I'm taking this, what's going on? Then about a month later, I get another infection. And I was like, okay, what's going on here? And the one thing I had preserved in this whole process was my sleep. My sleep was off, tremendously off. Like I think I was getting four hours, maybe three hours of sleep, interrupted sleep. And it was that moment that I thought to myself, wow, sleep is critically important for immune system. And ever since then, for the last three years, two years, I've pretty much been telling my, my clients, what does your sleep look like? And as we get into the, the discussion of immunity, Sleep is a very important factor in having a good immune system. So today, what I want is this. Many of you are looking at that picture. Tell me in the chat how it makes you feel. Like, does it, does it excite you? Do you wanna be there? Quickly, I wanna hear from you guys and, and see what, how, you, uh, how this kind of makes you feel. But what I want you to know is this. I want you all to start thinking about building your best immune system ever. Okay, so what I want is, Let's think about how we can do that. And as I go through my checklist, just say, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is what I gotta do, and, and we'll move forward and we'll improve your immune system as we go. Okay, let's do this. So, immune system factor. Oh, I see Donna says I don't like heights. Sorry, Donna. I, I, I did my best to find the most inspirational picture, and for some, I guess it isn't. So, I'll do my best next time. There we go, Linda says strong. Thank you, Linda. Okay, so here's my immune system X factor. If you do these five things right, you will feel amazing, okay? And your immune system will be improved. The first thing, as we all know, during the COVID time, hand washing. We gotta master how to hand wash, and I will show you the research on hand washing. For many of you, if you're in a hotspot, a COVID hotspot, if you've implemented all of the recommended strategies and hand washing is one of them, your immune system can just soar. The second one is sleep, which I introduced you to my aha moment is, as sleep being an issue of, of helping your immune system. The third is stress. If we can manage our stress, we can manage our immune system. And I'll tell you the scientific connection to that. Finally, we're gonna look at more of the things that you have control over, your diet and your vitamins. These are things that you can add into your program to boost your immune system. So let's dive deep into these five topics and just kind of shed some light as to how we can boost our immune system. So this is our immune system. Our immune system is key. Now look at that picture. If you have a comment about it, let me know. This is a lot of our lives out there. Late at night, we're sitting there, typing away on our computer. You know, we're, we're, we're messing up our lifestyle balance. We're interrupting our sleep pattern. We're um, le letting the light, the blue light banging, fl uh, fl uh, flashing off of our uh, computer screen, influence our brain and turn on our brain mechanism and messes up our circadian rhythm. And 
we're, we're probably missing meals and not hydrating. And there's a lot of factors that go in to that type of a lifestyle. Let's change that lifestyle. Let's start modifying the way we think about how we're going to balance our life. And by doing that, let's talk first about hand washing. So we know a 2019 study done by the CDC on hand washing pretty much said this. It can reduce respiratory illness like colds in the general population by almost 20%. That's a significant factor. If we sit there and just spend a few minutes, a few seconds actually washing our hands, we can actually reduce the risk of respiratory illnesses within us by 20%. No lifestyle change, no supplements, no food can actually guarantee that type of a, a result. So that's a significant factor. I'm sure many of you, and you can comment in the, in the chat box, I'm sure many of you with COVID have really upped your wa hand washing game. I know for me, I went from, uh, let's say maybe five times a day to I wash my hands now 25 times a day. Yes, it is a little bit stressful on the hands, but this is one of those things that, you know, we wanna make sure that you're doing because it can reduce your, your illness and your, and your risk. And hand washing can protect one out of five children with any type of respiratory infection. And what's the key thing that we all get during the cold and flu season is a respiratory infection, something like a pneumonia, something like a cold, something like a flu. So really get at washing your hands. And the recommendation is very simple. The scientific studies actually show scrubbing your hands for 20 seconds to remove all the, the germs. So let me do a quick, quick uh, demo, okay? And if you've ever watched one of those uh, medical uh, um, shows, you will watch a doctor actually do hand washing properly. So they will wash the back of their hand, they will wash the front of their hand, they will wash underneath each nail, they will wash the palm, they'll even go up half to the, to the elbow, and then they wash with the, just lather up and, and hot water, and then they rinse that off for 20 seconds. So this is what I tell my kids. You're gonna do one of two things. You're gonna sing, sing happy birthday twice, or you're gonna sing the alphabet once. So you choose what you want to do. And in the chat, if you're here and you're engaging with me, tell me what you like to do. Happy birthday twice or uh, sing your uh, alphabet, uh, ABCs one. Alphabet, Donna says alphabet. Okay, you know what, Michelle, we're gonna give Donna Bird a prize. She was quick to respond to that question. So put Donna Bird's name on the side there. Let's reach out to her and then we'll uh, uh, give her one of our uh, uh, prizes on our end, okay? Awesome. Okay, let's move on. Sleep, sleep is the next one. And sleep's super important. Um, Dr. Michael Rosen from the Cleveland Clinic, and you guys all know the Cleveland Clinic is world renowned. It actually has presidents and, and um, um, uh, dignitaries come from all around the world to actually do procedures. And this one doctor who just studies sleep says sleep is the most underrated health habit that we all have. And you know what, I, in my practice, I always tell my patients we need to qualify and quantify our sleep. So what do I mean by qualifying and quantifying sleep? You need to measure your sleep. Now there are a lot of cool nifty devices out there, but I mean, it's as simple as, hey, what time do I go to bed? 9 p.m. What time do I get up? 6 p.m. That's nine hours uninterrupted. But if you wanna get deeper into the science of sleep, there are cool gadgets like Fitbit. I actually use my Apple Watch. Some of you can have software on your iPhone or your, or your smartphones. I'd be happy to share kind of the software that, that I use if you're interested in. Shoot me a, sh sh a shout out on the chat and I'll share some of that stuff. So you want to qualify and quantify your sleep, okay? So um, a 2017 uh, sleep journal looked at twins. And basically what they did was this. They, they took the twins and they um, took a bit of their blood and they looked at their sleep patterns. And what, what they found was one twin had a different sleep pattern, another had a different sleep pattern. And what they measured was leukocyte count in the, in the blood. Well, what they found was the twin who had a shorter sleep duration had a depressed immune system. And they did it simple. The less they slept, the less white blood cells they made. The more they slept, the more white blood, white blood cells they made. And that's how they ran this particular sleep study. Now, here are some quick tips that kind of sleep experts tend to share. Um, and there are no order, something that you might not want to think about, but um, you know, 
over the years that I've talked to uh, patients, these have been some of the recommendations I've even shared with, with some patients. Changing your pillow might be a good one. I understand, and then I've had my patients tell me that pillows can be expensive. You can spend up to $200 on a pillow, or you can actually spend between, you know, eight, eight or $9 for a pillow. Now, I'm gonna leave that up to you. There's no rhyme. People like fluffy pillows, flat pillows, round pillows, square pillows. Like your, your, your preference is gonna be up to you. But I, I did something very interesting. Even changing the pillowcase sometimes is enough. The material of the pillowcase can change your sleep. You might wanna try that instead of investing in, a, in an expensive pillow. Make your bedroom darker. Now, many of you who were in the beginning of this presentation know that I was a firefighter for seven years before getting into medicine. Um, one of the things I learned in my process was I try to make my bedroom as dark as possible when I came off of the night shift. Now, for many of you, you might not be night shift workers, but you're, you're allowing too much light peering into your room. So you might have to like turn off the light, get a shade, close the bathroom door. You might have to figure out a way to make your, your room darker and even cooler. Bringing your temperature of your room down by one degree is enough to keep your body getting into a deeper sleep. So, you know, keeping your room cool could be another one. Practicing deep breathing before bed is a great way to get good sleep. Now I have a 20 minute, 10 to 20 minute meditation, deep breathing practice before I get to bed. And by doing that, it allows me to just to calm down. And I wanna hear from you guys on the chat. How many of you do a deep breathing meditation? How many of you do do a, uh, med a um, breathing meditation? Not necessarily a, a meditation, but a breathing technique. Love to hear from you and to share what you, what you actually do. Taking a warm bath. I see uh, French, she's like, I do. Colette says, I do more of a yoga practice, for sure. Even a yoga practice might be ideal. Some of you might decide to take a warm Epsom salt bath. One of the big things that I recommend is toning down, dimming down your lighting, and interacting less with your smartphone and your laptop as you get deeper into the night. Um, there's a couple of uh, guys online who sell these red glasses that are blue blockers that block out the light and get you more into a, a sleeping pattern. So, I mean, you could do that by just dimming your phone, uh, turning your TV down or turning it off. And then finally, there's some great um, sleep devices out there. One of my favorites, and I'm gonna show you here quickly on my phone is this one called the Sleep Cycle. Sleep Cycle right there, if you could all see it. And it's, I have an iPhone. It's free for iPhone users. If you wanna get the better version, it's, I think it's uh, $29.99. But basically, it begins the process of measuring my sleep at night, okay? And I wanna show you something quickly here. Um, it collects data, and this is done via Bluetooth and not, sorry, this is done by sound, not Bluetooth. That's why I actually really like this. It collects uh, stats. So I slept last night, my percentage sleep was 82%. That's actually a good sleep. I actually had a good sleep. So it's called Sleep Cycle on the, um, on the Apple app. So these are a few things that you can kind of become more technical, or if you have a Fitbit, or if you have a smartphone, there are many ways that you can monitor your sleep. Sleep is huge. Sleep is what they call a biohack. What I mean by biohack, it actually can reduce your aging if you sleep better. Worth, worth getting into it. So let's move on to stress. Stress is one of those big things that we need to start kind of um, looking at and, and understanding. And I wanna show you some of the symptoms and I'll talk about the mechanism connected to stress. So some symptoms of stress are difficulty waking, fatigue after sleep, so you wake up and you're completely tired, so improving your sleep might be ideal, craving salt, salty food, craving sweet, uh, sugary foods, and the big one is poor recovery from illness. This is a huge stress symptom that we often overlook. So remember my story I shared with you? My 2018 was highly stressed. My kids were keeping me up throughout the night. Um, my sleep was disturbed and I started catching, I got my pink eye the first and actually as a matter of fact, because of my pink eye, I now wear glasses. I got my pink eye first, got my cold second, I got uh, a respiratory condition third. That uh, was a, a direct relationship of poor sleep and high stress. Now the mechanism of stress is super simple. In your body, you make a catecholamine. That catecholamine stimulates the production of white blood cells. When your catecholamines are up, 
your white blood cells go down and it's an inverse re relationship. That's pretty much how it is. High stress, high hormone production and your white blood cells decrease. So that's symptoms of stress. Now, here are some quick do-it-yourself stress repair guidelines. Now, if you're in deep, deep stress and, and, you, and you don't know how to manage it, definitely energy work, talk therapy, seeing a naturopathic doctor, you know, going to your osteopath, talking with your energy healer. There are many different ways you can start kind of healing the internal spirit as it goes through your stress, uh, stressful situation. Second, an easy thing to do, take caffeine out, take your sugar out, take your alcohol out, and take your processed junk food that's connected back into sugar, okay? So let's get that done. If you're consuming too many caffeine, too much caffeine with extra sugar and milk, your, your sugar levels are high, your caffeine levels are high, your immune system will be depressed. And your stress now is unmanageable. Many of you have to begin the process of getting rid of worry, helping with your anger, uh, looking at your fear, and getting rid of potentially toxic friends who are causing you a tremendous amount of stress. Now, what's interesting is there's this great book by, her name is Mel Robbins. It's called The Five Second Rule. She, she suffered from worry, stress, anger, fear, and she created this five second rule. For those of you out there who want to better and improve and, and look at a way to kind of use natural ways to take care of your fear, your worry, your anger, uh, hit that book up and, uh, and you'll learn a few things about how to address um, your stress in five seconds. Now, the last thing is eating clean, which we're going to get into, moderate exercise, and fix your sleep. Now, those of you on the chat, when you see a really funky looking avocado like that, what do you think of? Quickly, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you see that uh, photo? Yummy. Linda Green says yummy. Yucky. Oh, my God. That's the first time I've ever heard that. Chantel says yummy. Linda, I'm going to make sure that... Uh, um, Cam Prev and the Nutters gives you a nice little prize. So Linda was the first to respond to that. So let's give Linda a quick uh, um, prize for that one. Thank you. Healthy fat, yes. Yummy and good fat, yes. Thank you, Laurel. Colette. Um, so you see this, food is medicine. And we need to start looking at food critically as medicine. Now, this is Socrates. Socrates shared this um, almost uh, um, 2,000 years ago, um, Socratic method. Now, here is the healthy diet. Let's look at it. Now, when you look at the perfect immune diet, time and time again, there's one diet that actually wins the prize. If you know the answer, put it in the chat. I'd be happy to hear it. There's only one that has the research behind it, it has the information behind it, and actually, um, time and time again, has been proven to be uh, um, the diet you want to move to. Keto, no. Whole food diet, no. Thanks, Linda. Thanks, Colette. Linda Green, Mediterranean diet, that is so right. Now, listen, probably the most studied diet in the world is the Mediterranean diet. You know, some of you may argue, oh, well, I do keto and I do uh, intermittent fasting. Really, at the end of the day, a lot of the principles in that follow very close to the Mediterranean diet. And the Mediterranean diet is super simple. And I do have some modifications on this screen. One of the first one is I do recommend eating organic simply because I believe in the environment and toxins on your vegetables and consuming toxins just isn't good for your immune system. So eating organic would be key. Now, in the Mediterranean plant-based diet, you're going to have, you know, 80% plant-based and then 20% everything else. So things you can have on a Mediterranean diet are fruits, vegetables, legumes, nuts, whole foods, seeds, uh, fermented foods. Occasional, you can have a pseudo grain. What I call a pseudo grain would be like quinoa. Some of you really enjoy quinoa. So occasionally I say you can do a pseudo grain. Probiotics, ginger, herbal tea. These are things that are key for an amazing Mediterranean diet. You want to avoid things like wheat and dairy and egg. Caffeine, we talked about it. Sugar, we talked about. Alcohol is sugar, so that's a connection there. Aspartame and MSG. I often recommend juicing vegetables you know, 30 ounces a day might be ideal. And finally, even something like a game meat, you know, reducing your meat intake and, and using more ethical meats in your, um, in your sources. So that's the perfect immune diet. We know that one tablespoon of sugar depresses your immune system by six hours. So 
you know, you can have a tablespoon of sugar in your coffee, let's say. You drink that, and for the next six hours, your immune system is going to have a hard time creating white blood cells and, and creating the, the ideal body necessary to fight off and ward off uh, colds, flus, and any type of uh, illnesses. So let's finally get into the vitamin component of this, and we know vitamins are key. I, when you sit down with me as a naturopathic doctor, I'm always going to stress diet. I'm always going to stress lifestyle. I'm always going to stress sleep. I'm always going to stress activity. And the reason I use these kind of strategies is they cost you nothing. The changes you make cost you nothing. And by simply changing those very fundamental things will already get you 66% better. So now the last 33%, we need to kind of get the immune system up. And the whole idea behind vitamins is simple. Farming 100 years ago is different than farming today. When you take foods as they are, they are completely depleted. And because they're depleted, we're, we're, we're missing the minerals and nutrients necessary to boost up our immune system and help us, make, help us make healthy white blood cells in the body. We also need vitamins to support our adrenal gland. We need vitamins to support our liver detoxification. We need our gut to be healthy. So we need to find things more on a therapeutic level that you can't in food through our vitamins. So I hope that kind of summarizes in a, in a nutshell the argument as to why you may need some vitamins in your, in your protocol. Now, you need certain vitamins for your deep vitality. And what I want to do here is I want to just kind of, kind of outline a few of the key ones. Zinc. Zinc is a big one. 50 milligrams of zinc is key for a good deep immune system. Okay? So we want to make sure that you know, we have zinc in our, in our diet. Now, you can have zinc by itself, or you can find a complementary product that has zinc in it, like, a, like an immune multi, let's say. You want to have D3. Now, remember how I talked about the Mediterranean diet as having a lot of um, wonderful research on nutrition and it healing cardiovascular, it boosting the immune system, it helps with cancer, it helps with heart disease, like, and it helps with a lot of different conditions. Vitamin D is one of those vitamins that is highly, highly researched. And you can go through any association, any organization, any research, and everybody will always say it doesn't hurt to have vitamin D. Vitamin D is an, a, a hormone. Vitamin D is an immune booster. Vitamin D is a vitamin. So it, it, it kind of has this chameleon style of a uh, approach that it has to help um, the immune system boost. So you want to put vitamin D in your protocol. I'm going to give you one little secret. If you have the opportunity to get your vitamin D tested, it's probably ideal because we test vitamin D at our clinic. And one of the things I've seen over the years is I've seen patients, when they test their vitamin D, 95% of patients have subcritical vitamin D levels. Oh my God, Dr. Marku, that's a crazy stat that you just threw out. Yes, 95% of patients have subcritical vitamin D levels. Test your vitamin D and ask your doctor, or your naturopath, what level of vitamin D will get you to a substantial, uh, comfortable level of D3. Vitamin C is a great way to boost immune system. There's a lot of research on vitamin C also. Um, so throw that in your protocol. And there are a number of supplementations out there that use herbal combinations to boost. And a lot of these herbs have been connected to respiratory um, boosting, uh, improving uh, conditions in the respiratory condition, and boosting the immune system, allowing you to make white blood cells to fight the, uh, the immune. Now, we're coming close to the end. I want to give you 15 minutes to kind of ask your questions. I already see questions lining up in the Q&A box. If you have one and something jumped in your mind of what we covered to, to, that, to point, please put it in the question and answer box. But I want to leave just a few uh, uh, ideas here with you. You know, when you sit down and you kind of like start to reflect on what you need to do um, with your health, you should ask three key essential questions for life. Always ask yourself, what am I eating and how can I change what I'm eating? Because that is the cheapest and easiest way to change your life. Change your food will change your life. Second of all, you want to understand how you're breathing. Now, many of us will go to school and we, we learn our grammar and we learn our math, but we never learn how to balance our finance books 
and we never learn how to breathe. I think breathing is critical. Pay attention to how you breathe. If you're a shallow breather, you're probably gonna have an acidic body. If you're a deep breather, you're probably gonna have an alkaline body. Breathing can actually change the alkalinity and acidity of your body faster than you can change by choosing the food you eat. Second, look at what you're drinking. Really, there's only one drink in the world that everybody's gonna fight for and everybody in the world looks for, and that's water. Everything else is just added balance, added drinks that you just put into your protocol. So are you drinking enough water? And is that water you're drinking clean and filtered? That's a question I always ask. Are you moving? Are you active? We're, we're animals. We're supposed to be active. We're supposed to walk daily. We're supposed to do some type of uh, exercise daily that requires um, resistance training. You know, we were meant to cultivate the land, not sit at a desk. So do you get out and walk? You sit around groups thinking, thinking of, you know, good feelings, thinking of expanding your horizons, expanding your mindset. Thinking is key. The way you're living, are you living in an um, environment uh, where you are uncomfortable? Get yourself out of there. Are you living in a, in a place that you're not happy? Get yourself out of there. The way you're living. And finally, how you're resting. I do believe you need a moment to rest. As a matter of fact, I took this week off to actually rest my mind and just sit back and relax before I go back to the rat race again. You need that, that, that escape. So think about these things and critically ask yourself, you know, I put this list out in front of me at the beginning of the year, at the middle of the year and at the end of the year and just try to modify aspects of this. Oh, this year I've decided I'm going to go uh, vegetarian with a little bit of, um, uh, you know, nuts and seeds here and there. That might be a modification that you decide to do. I'm going to purchase a, a filtered machine and uh, there's a question from uh, Laurel, Laurel that I'm going to answer. Why filtered water? So I'll answer that question in, a, in about a minute, Laurel, for you. Um, and I'll tell you why my theory on filtered water. And I've done a lot of research on water. I could, I could do a presentation just on water um, if you're ever interested in the future. So what I want to do is I want to thank you all for you know, being here. I hope I kind of help kind of reset your brain on um, you know, considering what you need to do for your immune system. Look at your diet, look at your stress, look at your sleep, you know, modify your vitamin intake and, and go from there. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna spend a few minutes um, uh, going through the questions because I actually find that more valuable. We got about 10 minutes that will kind of go through all of these uh, questions for you. And as, and as we talk about it, maybe more questions come up and, and if you get it before we cut off our cutoff time, I'll try to fit it in for you all. Now, in the chat box, I want you to write one thing that you will do for yourself after this webinar, something that I made you think about. So let's get, a, uh, let's get the chat box rolling here. Um, take zinc is Teresa. Less stress, Vanessa. Ah, Chantel, she wants to do the research. Drink more water. Um, address your stress, Nadia. Susan says breathing exercise is excellent. I'm glad I've, I've kind of got you guys thinking on what you should do. Now, so for some of you, if you have more questions as to what we presented here, what I, what I said, you're welcome to follow us at, uh, uh, at CanPrev. Join us on, fa on Facebook. These are where you can find me. My name is Dr. Elias Marcoux on Instagram, Facebook. And if you go to my website, I've got a, um, a, a freebie there. Um, if you sign up, give me your email address, you can uh, get a, a free how to detox in 24 hours with a whole bunch of these things that we talked about in, in the protocol. Hopefully you'll, you'll jump on and, and grab that free uh, uh, offer. Now, let's get into the questions here. Um, let me just see. Yep, that's a, let me go back to this. I want to thank you guys. Um, so I'm going to go back to this. And let's see. I want to answer all your questions. Just give me a minute here. Uh, okay. Let me see here. So, the first one, anonymous attendee. I'm in menopause uh, uh, phase of my life. Sleep is very difficult. Waking up overheated in the room. So, okay. So, anonymous. Um, basically, you have to get your self uh, assessed. Check your estrogen levels. 
you should go see a naturopathic doctor or a medical doctor in your area. They're going to run your estrogen levels. If your estrogen levels are low, which is probably why it's affecting your sleep, um, low estrogen cause temperature spikes, uh, which we call um, during, the, during the night, during the day we call hot flashes. At night we call them night sweats. And you need someone to help you correct your estrogen levels. Okay? So um, that's what I would recommend to you. Next one, Donna, are there natural probiotics? Ooh, good question. So yes, there are natural probiotics. Natural probiotics are found in things like yogurt and um, uh, and um, um, kimchi and different kinds of foods that have natural probiotics and prebiotics built in. Um, so you can get probiotics from food. The levels of probiotics are actually super low. So I'll give you an example. A cup of uh, yogurt is about 2 million uh, probiotic spores. Um, a supplement about the size like this can be 50 billion. The question is, is why do you want more probiotics? Well, 2 million is not sufficient enough. It's like a drop in the bucket, a drop in the ocean. You want to start getting into higher levels. And in order to get higher levels, you have to eat a lot more of those foods and your, your calorie count is going to go up. Or you could find a great probiotic on the market that um, uh, will give you the, the right probiotic count and, and really populate your gut properly. So there are great products on the market. Joyce, what foods contain zinc? Oh, there's a lot of foods that contain zinc. The one that you, that's mostly considered a zinc food is your oysters and your mussels. These, these sea food based um, uh, uh, shellfish all have high levels of zinc. Now, when you look at zinc from a um, uh, vegetable perspective, the levels of zinc go dramatically, drop dramatically low, but Things that have zinc are things that are root vegetables, things like beets, uh, sweet potatoes, um, um, carrots, these kind of things have, have zinc. So those are zinc-containing foods. I hope I answered your question, Joyce. Um, next one is, uh, Donna, is there something to take to help vitamin D levels increase? I had low levels, took high amounts of vitamin D, and my levels only increased minimally. Oh, Donna, that's a tough one. So I, I, I told you in the beginning, what you want to do is you want to get your levels tested. If your levels are low, then you need to go up. I mean, I, unfortunately, I won't be able to tell you dosages, but we go high dosages with our patients in our visits. So go to a naturopathic doctor. Don't try to figure it out yourself. Help them modify your dosage, and then that will help you get to your levels high. A high level or a, a, a satisfactory level is, um, so if you test 25 vitamin D, you want the, the range is 50 to 250. You want your range to be between uh, 150 to 200, if that helps you. Hopefully that helps you out. Um, let me just scroll down here on a couple of more questions, okay? Um, so next one is from Nadia, having an autoimmune disease, type one diabetes, what product can I take to boost the immune system? Oh, very interesting, Nadia. As a matter of fact, I looked that up the other day because I have a patient, and I'm not going to tell you much about it, but I have a, I have a patient um, who's a nurse and she's on an autoimmune um, um, formulation that helps her autoimmune system, but depresses your immune system, but she wants to boost her immune system. So um, what I usually recommend in those situations is vitamins. You want to boost your immune system with vitamins. Now, um, there are also some herbs that will work out. If you look at the research, you know, taking echinacea does not change your autoimmune system. It actually changes your immune system in a different way. You have two separate kind of immune systems. It's called T1, Th1, Th2. When you have an autoimmune, your, your autoimmune is up and your acute immune is down. So this is your cold and flu immune. So what tends to happen is you want to boost the cold and flu immune. And you could do that with vitamin C, uh, zinc, uh, ACEs plus zinc. And as a matter of fact, your immune system, your autoimmune disease will benefit from these vitamins also. So it doesn't boost your immune, it actually modulates your immune system. I hope that answers your question. You need to go see a doctor, a naturopathic doctor to help you uh, fix that out, uh, Nadia. Um, okay, uh, anonymous, missed list of important vitamins. Um, you know what, we're going to have that available. You can go back and look at this uh, videotaping. Uh, uh, it's going to be on. And I'll... Uh, what I'll do is I'll have um, uh, the staff over at Nutters possibly send this out to all of the participants on, uh, on, our, um, on our chat today. Uh, thank you, Nadia. I hope you find your answer. 
Um, there's a couple of more questions. Now I'm gonna get out of this presentation and I'm gonna go into the chat. Um, let me find the chat here, folks. And then I knew there was a bunch of things uh, there. Uh, water, okay. Laurel, I wanna answer your question, Laurel. And the other thing here, if you do have questions, um, you're happy to reach out to me. I'll, I'll be happy to kind of uh, answer your question. I can't treat you over an email. Um, I really highly recommend you set up with a, uh, a naturopathic doctor in your area or a medical doctor or a nutritionist we're all there to help you and help you get better. So this is Laurel's question, very good question. Why filtered water? Is it our city water good enough? Laurel, I'm going to um, uh, break your heart. And I'm gonna tell you, do not drink your city water. Your city water only takes out big things out of the water, but things that you cannot see, like drugs and medication and, uh, uh, you know, Women will take a birth control, they pee out the birth control through their urine, in their urine is the drug, the drug goes into the water system. The water system does not take out that uh, chemical out of the water and you will consume medication. So you wanna make sure you're, you're, you're using a good filtration system. Now, a lot of the filtration system on the refrigerators are just carbon systems. Carbon systems take out only um, chlorine and fluorine. That's not a good system. You want a multi-stage system or you want a reverse osmosis system. Now, go to your local water guy in your area, see what's the best unit for you based on your budget. I prefer, we prefer the reverse osmosis system. Um, I'm not gonna give you a brand, sorry. I, I can't do that on here, but you know, start doing a little bit of your research, find the best RO system that falls into your budget and get that. Uh, if that doesn't work, there are other options on the market. Something like a Brita, it's only a one-stage filter. The, the filter system in your refrigerator is a one-stage filter. Do not drink your water from your city. Get it filtered at home on another level. So folks, I had a lot of fun today. I hope you had a lot of fun. We have some people with some prizes. Um, we have some people with, um, um, uh, you know, uh, that are gonna be taken out of the draw for, for more prizes. And we're gonna go from there and see how, see how it all goes. Um, let me just do one more quick. I got one minute. I'm going to do one more quick. Uh, I'm going to do one more quick question. Can you please explain why eggs are a food to avoid? Oh, okay. Vanessa, Vanessa asked me this question. Vanessa, I want to answer your question before we say goodbye. Um, so eggs are highly, highly allergic sensitive. People are sensitive to eggs. If when I do my testing, my food sensitivity testing in my clinic, these are the top five. Um, food to, uh, eggs are um, uh, a high sensitivity food. Um, dairy is a high sensitivity food. Bread, wheat is a high sensitivity food. Gluten. Corn is a high sensitivity food. Soy is a high sensitivity food. Egg is in there. You want to take eggs out. Um, Many of you will probably feel better when you take out, eggs out. There's a small percentage of you that are okay with eggs. I recommend you do a food sensitivity test to figure out what your egg sensitivity level is, and then you can decide if it's good for you or not. I'll tell you right now, I don't eat eggs. They actually really upset my system. So hopefully I, that, answered, uh, that answered your question. I've looked through all of the questions. Can you please explain eggs? Excellent. Nadia, thank you. Nadia says, really enjoyed your virtual talk today. Thank you very much, Nadia. And I want to say, you know, I hope you guys join us here again. If they have me back, we'll dive into another topic. I'll bring my energy for you. You know, I bring everything. I leave it all here for you. I hope today you all learn one thing. If you want to reach out and connect with me, uh, I, here are my, uh, here's my information. Once again, Dr. Elias Marcou, you can connect me on Facebook, my DrElyasMarcou.com website. I'm happy to hear from you. Join our group. Go to Camprev. Have a look at their uh, their line of uh, of products. Nutters, thank you for in inviting me. Michelle, are you there? Come and join me. I am. Thank you so much for a fantastic presentation. You know, thank and you. thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, you know, the yeah. winner. We will definitely get the prizes out to you. Uh, Canfred will be in touch with you after the show. And just again, thank you, thank you. This was amazing.
Thank you, Michelle. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys, um, you know, enjoyed the, the, the virtual talk. Sometimes it's hard. I wish I was there and I can interact with you and answer all your questions. But, hey, this is second best, and we're, we're delivering uh, good programming here for you guys. Absolutely. And just to clarify, this is recorded, and we will send it out to everybody who registered for the event. Uh, so check your mailboxes. It should be out probably later on today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody, CanPrev team. And uh, that's it for us. Have See you, guys. Day. Thank you. Thank you. Here's, here's some much love. Have a good day. We'll see you soon. Bye now.